Hi, this is Don Shank with the Red Hat Developer Program. Today we're going to, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to install the .NET Framework in your RHEL virtual machine. If you don't have the virtual machine installed, check the link below uh, for instructions, a little short five minute video on how to install it. So I'm at the uh, PowerShell prompt. So I'm going to SSH into my VM. I've already started it. And then it's just a matter of running um, six commands and tweaking a file. So, so forgive my bad typing. I could, you know, cut and paste, but that'd be too easy, wouldn't it? So the first thing I want to do is get a list of what's available in my subscription because at the end there's a pool ID right there it is and I'm going to use that in the next statement let me copy that and then attach well I'm not typing very well today am I <laughs> It sounds like I'm really hammering my keyboard, but I'm not. It's just the sound travels through my desk and into the microphone. So that's why it, I'm not. I'm really not abusing my keyboard, I promise. So this is going to attach to that pool, which con includes the software I need. And then, man, I'm really not on today. I'm going to tell it which repo to, to enable, which will be the rel 7. Now, in my case, I'm using server here. There's also a workstation if you're running uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux workstation, but I'm running server. And that's what you get with the VM that you downloaded with the Red Hat development suite. Okay, this this takes a little bit of time. We're going to pull some stuff down over the inter interwebs. And then after this, we we basically have to install a utility and then we actually install .NET Core. Okay, it's enabled yum, yum install and dash y means uh, don't bother asking me you know, if I approve of it because you, you know you're going to say yes so why not just go ahead and do it. So this installs the subscription utility and then I'm going to do Red Hat .NET for 11 is 1.1. That's the version we're downloading, installing. This takes a little bit. It's not huge though. The one of the nice things about .NET Core is it, it's really compact. When you, you like, you only get the core and the, basically the very functionality, very very basic. And then when you when you code, you uh, you, you tell it which dependencies you want, it pulls the bits then, down then. So and that's really nice because you can get a lot smaller, uh, you know, applications. So now it's uh, now it's installed, but it's not available. And when I when I run this command, it's gonna it's gonna enable it, but it's gonna open a new bash session. Um, what did I do wrong? Enable dot no, eleven. So now I should have dot net available. Bing, there it is. But what I want to do yet is is add it to this file. Let's see where is it? Dash rc, which is off the root of the system. Oh, that's not right. It's off the root of the the root for the user. The user's home directory. There it is. Go down here, and I'm going to add. If you've never used Vim, oh boy, it's fun. <laughs> so the source, which basically like runs a file in in uh, Linux, I'll have to describe it. Source enable. All right. What what all right? What happens here is every time you log in to your VM, now it'll run this and enable .NET Core. So, 
If I do an exit here, watch, it doesn't get out of VM. Because remember, I started another bash session, so now I exited the second one. Exit now. Now I'm back to PowerShell. I can do it directly to show you, right? Now Vagrant SSH. And every time I do this now, the .NET Core will be available. Let's see. Boom. Boom, there it is. So that's how you do the install. The next uh, video I do, I'll show you how to share files between your VM and your Windows host. And then that opens doors, like then you'll be able to edit from Visual Studio Code in Windows against files that are on your VM. So there you go, that's this video, and stay tuned and watch out for the next one. Thanks. Just to recap, here's a list of the steps that we did. Notice that the first step you get the pool ID, and then you use that on the second step. The rest will be the same. Uh, the third step, if you're using Workstation, substitute the word Workstation for the word server. Otherwise, that's it. You're good to go.